Today on Lock Horns, we explore the genre where metal meets the machine. It's an essential album's debate on the most important records of industrial metal. Welcome back to Lock Horns, Banger TV's live weekly metal debate show coming to you from the Banger Bar at Banger Films. Before we do anything this week, we want to start by paying our respects to the now late and great Chris Cornell. As all of you know, yesterday we lost one of the all-time greatest singers, not only in metal and rock, but of all music. None of us would be here if it wasn't for the likes of Chris, and we want to send our heartfelt uh, thanks and uh, well wishes to him and his family and everyone uh, who's been affected by this terrible loss. But in any case, we do have a show to do. And this week, we continue our tradition of digging into the essential albums of the subgenres on our heavy metal family tree. And so this week, we are digging into industrial metal. What are the top 10 industrial metal albums of all time? And to help me with this painless exercise, I hope, is Jairus Khan, welcome back. Thank you very much. Jairus, of course, joined us on the uh, Metal in Fashion uh, panel uh, a few months ago now. Uh, what have you been up to? Um, I, not much. Yeah? No, I'm trying to relax. <laughs> it's been a busy year. Good for so. you. Yeah. Good for Taking you. Taking some me time. That's cool. Um, tell me about your connection to this part right. of the tree. How did you get into industrial metal? Um, I, I always liked heavy metal. I was mm -hmm. on heavy metal and hair metal. I was super into yeah. uh, as like a, like a kid and a teenager. Mm -hmm. I had a cousin who would come by and drop off. Oh, you should check out this. You like Guns N' Roses. You like you know Motley Crue or whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I was 13 or so, uh, someone gave me a Frontline Assembly record. Right. I had never heard anything like it. I'm like, this is amazing. This is industrial. I don't know what it is, but it sounds great. I want more like this. And I went to a friend's. I'm like, I heard about this band called Nine Inch Nails. Do you know about them or whatever? And she's yeah. like, "Oh yeah, I have. I have their new record, Broken, which just came out, yeah. and uh, and I'll never forget it because their roommate, who was wandering by at the time, said, uh, they're shit now.'" And it's just like Downward Spiral wasn't even out. It right. was just like ninety two. Right. Anyway, I got it home. I listened to it, and it was like nothing I'd ever heard. It was so aggressive and violent, and 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 the guitars were perfect, and I've been hooked since. Awesome. Yeah. You know, for me, it was always a little bit too on the industrial side right. for my liking. And I guess, uh, what was it specifically that appealed to you about combining the obvious metal elements with, with, with industrial sounds? I think it was, it was how, uh, how robotic and industrial and repetitive a lot of it was. Right. I felt like, like being able to take a riff and loop it, mm -hmm. uh, being able to, to, to take what would be kind of like blast beats, which aren't 100% consistent, right. but doing it with a drum machine instead. So it's like the exact same sound hammering into you. Yep. I loved it. I thought it was, it was so much more, um, it was less human, which I enjoyed. Right. Yeah. And obviously repetition, I think, is yeah. a big part of the appeal of metal in general. And I guess industrial metal just sort of leverages, has the ability yeah. to leverage that side of music that much more because you're using machines. Yeah, absolutely. It's so, it's so processed and it's so yep. like it can really create a different kind of atmosphere awesome. than, than yep. kind of more human metal. Cool. Well, let's dig into this. And as always, it's not just about us. It's about all of you watching uh, today. We want to hear your input on what you think are the essential metal albums. Again, not metal bands. This is an album debate. We're digging in. We're getting nerdy as we like to do so much on Lock Horns. And I want to give a shout out to everyone that's joining us from around the world. Here we go. Germany, England, Austria, Venezuela, Italy, Portugal, Mexico, Israel, Serbia, Scotland, Singapore, Turkey, and the Ukraine. And from the United States, we have folks from Texas, Colorado, New York, Pennsylvania, Florida, Ohio, Atlanta. And in Canada, we have people joining us from Quebec City and the Schwa. <laughs> Oshawa, for those that don't know the shorthand. And of course, to keep us all on track is Lisa Latisseur. Hi. Hi. 
This, we're in your ballpark this week. I know, week. I'm all excited this week. I have so many opinions. Ballpark's the wrong <laughs> metaphor. You gotta help me with that one. But we're in- we're, It's we're, in my dark alley. You're in your dark, my dark we're alley. In your dark alley. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> great. I'm outnumbered. So I've got a lot of work uh, to do. Uh, okay, well, let's get into this. I guess we were thinking a good place to kind of get oriented, Lisa, was to check in with our industrial okay. metal bands list first. Yeah, so um, back in the early days of Lockhorn season one, uh, I hosted, co-hosted the industrial show, and uh, it was tricky. This is not an easy genre yeah. in terms of uh, metal, and uh, you know I'm still uh, having to live with the fact that I took the Nin magnet first to put it on upside down, brutal, and then I threw them <laughs> off because they're not a metal band. Anyway, um, we did end up with a chart at the end of the day, Let's and it looked, look. it looked like this. Okay, industrial metal. We had Ministry, uh, Cam FDM, White Zombie, Killing Joke, Godflesh. Fear Factory, a pitch shifter, Jenna Torturers, Ramstein, and who is that at the bottom? Can't read it. Author and Punisher. Author and Punisher. It was like the lone new band that right, we had. Right, right. What do you think of that list, Jairus? Uh, it, it's pretty good. I think yeah. a lot of it is solid, right? Like, yeah. the ministry is, is it, you, can't, you can't take them off. Right, right? yeah. Uh, pitch shifter is a good call, I think. Yeah. White Zombie is good. I think if White Zombie should be on there, then Static X should be on there too. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. I think I threw, I think yeah, I threw I, them I on the floor, did. maybe I with a word I was not nice then. Well, I'm remembering now we got, <laughs> they did get into some d debate yeah. discussion around new metal and industrial metal and there being some crossover and maybe Static X kind of being that right. transition band in a way. I feel like Static X is if, if White Zombie uh, wrote songs about their feelings instead of about Dracula. I feel like, but I feel like sonically they have a lot in common, right? right. Like, like right. Static X is obviously angrier, right? Right. But uh, sonically they, they have a lot in common. Well, you make a good point. I mean, obviously lyrical content has got something uh, to, to industrial metal in terms of what makes it uh, unique. So I want to kind of get your input here. I know you have some really uh, helpful thoughts on where that line is between industrial music and industrial metal because right. I think that is kind of a central debate that surrounds this particular style of metal. So right. where does that distinction lie for you? I mean, I think, I think they come from very different places, right? Okay. Like I think industrial music comes from experimental music where right. metal doesn't, right? right? But I think, that, I think that for an industrial record to be an industrial metal record, it needs to be able to be a metal record. If you were to replace the drum machine with a drummer, if you were gonna change the distortion, if you were gonna unprocess the guitars, play it live, mm -hmm. does it sound like metal? And if right. the answer is no, right. then I think it's just straight up industrial, it's not industrial right. metal. Right, right. And I guess, I mean, metal guitar is God, generally. Right. Everything matters in metal, right. all instruments matter, but at the end of the day, it really is the sound of the guitar, the riffing of the guitar, the feel of the guitar that is driving the music. It's the principal songwriting tool. And I suppose, I mean, if you start to strip that guitar out or lessen it, does that sort of take it off the industrial metal I think chart for I, you? I think so. I think it's, it's tough to think of a record that doesn't have guitars prominent that I would say is industrial metal. Right. Like I think there are super heavy industrial acts that if they had guitars could kind of be metal like Numb if it had guitars, but they just use synths instead. Right. 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 Like they made it as heavy as they could, but I wouldn't say it's industrial metal without the guitar. Yeah, for sure. Yes. The chat agrees with us so far. Very okay. Good. We have some comments. Here we go. Us. Go to the board, Michael Montoya, welcome back. It's the guitars. Having heavy guitars is the thing that makes it metal. If you don't have the heavy guitars playing a key role, then it's not metal. Also, those shout slash scream vocals usually are a dividing line. Daniel Nee says, you can have all the machinery and construction sounds you want, but it must contain palm muted, love it, power chords. Uh, Matthew Williams says, if you say Dream Theater is yes plus Metallica, Okay, then Ministry is Throbbing Gristle plus Metallica. Okay, some good math. I like the math here. Corgal the Exterminator says, I'd say the best industrial metal was probably released by non-metal bands. Okay, and James Blob says, the only true and pure industrial metal bands in existence are Ministry and Godflesh. Every other band is either not heavy enough to be metal, a combo genre band, or crypto new metal. Ouch! I'm, I'm, I'm fucking confused now. I don't know where to go. What do you think about Mr. Blob's comment there? I mean, I think Ministry and Godflesh are, are unambiguous. I think they're, yeah. the genre wouldn't be what it is without either of those bands. Um, Street Cleaner is a landmark. We're not there yet. 
She's tough. No, I'm dead. She, but fair. Yeah, we're yeah. going to get there. Very good. Um, that cowbell is small, but yeah. it is mighty. Do not <laughs> mistake. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, we have an order in here. I'm very sorry. We have an order in here. And uh, it starts with the legend. And maybe it's Godflesh, and maybe it's not. What is maybe it? It's not. It's tough in this dark alley. You've got to be careful. OK, the legend. As you all know, we like to pick the legend, whether we're talking about bands or albums. And Jairus, you get the honors uh, to tell us what you feel is the legend album of this particular genre, or do you want to leave it to Lisa? I'll leave it to Lisa. Lisa. Yeah. Me? Uh, okay, well, uh, this was... Uh, Ministry? It was clear to me that it was the mind is a terrible thing to taste. Okay. Well, let's see what the board has to say about the legend. Here we go. Ministry, uh, Tim Gavin, the mind is a terrible thing to taste. Land of Rape and Honey is a good record, but was more of a transition album since you can still hear a lot of the sound that was on Twitch. The Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste really brought in a genuine metal feel to it. Clearly you've got something to say about this 100% record. agree, 100% agree. I think that, I think that uh, Land of Rape and Honey is a good record, but there's three or four songs that really have guitars on it. Right. There, it's not a metal record, it has yep. a couple songs, but this is front to back solid it's it's fast it's slow it's sludgy it's aggressive it's mm -hmm. it's a perfect record it's a fair i mean maybe because it's a legend it speaks for itself that it is pioneering mm -hmm. i mean not being a fan of ministry but of course knowing the sound and knowing the time uh i put them in that context of that late 80s early 90s when really maybe with the exception of a rob zombie and probably a lot of other bands that i'm not familiar with but in terms of on the broad level no one's really doing anything quite like this is that fair there i mean there are a couple bands that that were exploring the same space but yep. no one managed to perfect it the way the ministry did here yeah. right like their combination of kind of traditional rock guitars drums but with synths with industrial soundscapes with samples yep. is it's perfect. It's such a big, sort of commanding, menacing yeah, sound, too. Uh, totally distinctive. Lisa, what's the board saying about this record? Okay, so here's the thing. We picked this record because it was obvious to us. Yeah. And then we did a Twitter poll. Right. And the Twitterverse... And shit hit the fan? Twitterverse uh, told us it is not uh, Mine is a Terrible Thing to Taste. It is Psalm 69. Okay, well, here we go. Carne Verde says, Rape and Honey... Had only had a couple of metal guitar based songs, but mine is a terrible thing to taste, was where uh, Jorgensen really fo went uh, fully on board with it. Okay, this is so this is about the mine. These are the people who agree with Okay, this. I remember it being called Techno Thrash then. Interesting. That's, that's sacred ground you're stepping on there. Daniel Crow, the Ministry album has to be uh, Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste. It's the full first full industrial metal album from Ministry and have far-reaching uh, far influence. Korgel, great call on Mind. Here we go. But Psalm 69 is more brutal and more uh, metal. Hannah Klein, welcome back. The first record that comes to mind is definitively Psalm 69, uh, The Way to Succeed and The Way to Suck Eggs. <laughs> the album that exposed the band to a wider audience, especially thanks to the songs uh, Jesus Built My Hot Rod and NWO. Uh, Peter Day chimes in, this discussion starts and ends with ministry. You can bicker over whether Rape and Honey or Mind was the first metal album, but it's ministry, probably Rape and Honey though. Okay, so Psalm 69, what do you think? Good record, yeah. but I think I think it's, it. to me it sounds poppier. I think Jesus Built My Hot Rod. It's my ignorance. Is this it? Yeah. <laughs> Do I get ministry points? Yeah. Doesn't even have a name on it. Go ahead. Sorry, cut you off, Jairus. No, very good. I yeah. think I think it's a great record, but I think it is poppier. I think right. like Gibby's guest vocals, they're not super thrashy. They're mm -hmm. not super metally. Mm -hmm. Like they they sound like butthole surfers, which is good. Right. It's a good fit for it, but right. I don't feel like it's it's the same kind of front to back metal. So you stick in with I'm sticking with the mind. You got it. Okay. I mean, it's interesting because uh, more people heard Psalm 69. It came out after industrial metal was right. more of a thing. Right. Uh, but I listened to them back to back in preparation for this. Taste is darker. For sure. Um, but we didn't make a magnet for it, but I finally got to bring some records in Yay. to the show. We can put that on there because we do have a few comments. About, finally, it's uh, not, you know, Morbid <laughs> Angel, Ultras of Madness. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Represent uh, the land of rape uh, and honey. There so, what is. is the board saying? Do we have more? Well, Twitter was very in? clear, okay. and the chat is not clear. Okay, here we go. Matt 
uh, bolts. My vote is for Ministry, The Land of Rape and Honey. Putting drum machines through distortion pedals with guitars was entirely new at the time, and Ministry became more and more metal as time went on. One of the first riffs I ever learned on the guitar uh, was The Missing. Uh, Matthew Levin's A Land of Rape and Honey maybe may have been influential, but let's not kid ourselves, people. Other than the first couple of tracks, it is industrial electronica. Are those fighting words? I'm not sure. Not metal. Psalm 69 is the relentless march of an entire army goose step army goose stepping on your face. Guitars buzzing like electric saws cutting through bone. There's a sentence. Uh, if Psalm 69 doesn't make the board, I'll ding a ding dang. Okay, I'm not even doing that. Ding, so ding dang my dang along. Ding dong. There you go. Is that Kid Rock? No. <laughs> Do we have more down there? Uh, uh, I think we've talked a lot about ministry. We definitely have. And we'll see <laughs> if, as the show goes on, one of these uh, drops off. But right now, we have three ministry records on the list. <laughs> well, uh, who some, invited me on the show? Some people are happy. Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, we also like to do a guest choice. Mm -hmm. uh, so we spend a lot of time talking about ministry, but Jairus, tell us your guest choice. Right. So my guest choice is the uh, is the self titled debut by a, a Swiss band called the Young Gods. Okay. Yeah, we got the um, we got the magnet here. Tell me about this band. Don't very know. good. Yeah. So they came out of they came out of a scene in Switzerland, which at the time was dominated by Yellow, the band Yellow, okay. and a bunch of Yellow knockoff bands. Okay. Uh, and this record was 86 or 87, um, and so it's before The Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste, it's before mm. Godflesh, uh, and they were doing things in it that became kind of staples of industrial metal. It's right. so weird and angry and, and grindy, and mm. uh, to come out of the space it did and at the time it did, it's really groundbreaking. So why didn't you why don't you think it made an impact, given that it was kind of their first? I, I mean, I think it, I think it did, but I think they're they're uh, a musicians' band. So right, right. Uh, uh, when David Bowie released Outside, uh, mm -hmm. he got asked in an interview, "Were you influenced by Nine Inch Nails on this record?" And he said, "Actually, this Swiss band called the Young Gods." So All I think right. that a lot of bands heard Young Gods and were influenced by them, but I don't think they ever got the the critical okay. uh, chart success cool. that other ones did. At least do we have a video? We're going to go to a video of the Young Gods. We do. A lot of the people in the chart are not familiar with this band. They're not as well known, so okay. we'll just show a little clip, uh, and I'd like to hear what you have to say about this. I'm all ears. Let's <laughs> do it. Now I'm no expert, but this seems like Ramstein before Ramstein was Ramstein. Yeah, it's Ramstein before Ramstein. <laughs> it's ministry before ministry, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean it's crazy. Yeah, it's totally nuts. And, and I mean it's no big surprise that in '87 that something like that didn't get a huge popular appeal. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, it's really something. Bit of a lone wolf and yeah. got forgotten. Very yeah. cool. Thanks for that. Okay, but Lisa, it's time to move on, right? We'll There's more. A couple quick questions, uh, comments okay. on Young Gods. Here we go. Mikael Alexerndi uh, says, The Young Gods? Question mark, exclamation, question mark, metal? Are you kidding me? All right. Mikael Lopez, Young Gods, good band, more than industrial metal for me. They are, uh, they are their own thing. Great band, but truly something else. So they're an island. Uh, Corgal the Exterminator, Young Gods is also named after a Swans album. So you can at least admit that Swans were an influence on this show. Consider it done. If we must. Uh, did you know that? I did know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course you did. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah, All so. Right. Um, People like to guess what they think the legend is going to be in advance, yeah. and most people guessed not ministry. Most people guessed Godflesh. Okay, Godflesh, presumably this record, which comes up in a lot 
of uh, Lockhorn's episodes. That's, of course, uh, Godflesh Street Cleaner. We talked about it last week on the 15 Essential Earache albums of all time. Clearly a landmark album. Let's go to the board. Leonard Reifstein says, The Legend is Street Cleaner by Godflesh. Its diversity of sonic texture is masterful. They fuck your ears with every power tool in the shop. Yeah. Yar de BM Mofo says, uh, Godflesh's Street Cleaner is the standard every industrial metal band strives for. The album continuously is uh, cited by both industrial and pretty much every other metal sh genre. Definitely, this, this is an album that resonates uh, with uh, non-industrial fans, I would agree. Jamie Laszlo, there would be no Street Cleaner without Ministry. So put two Ministry albums on the list. Okay, here we go. Rape and Psalm 69. Those minute, they just won't go away. You guys, enough. Uh, Julian Silva, God Flesh is the one and only way, in all caps, just so you know. Thrash Maniac 99, my vote is God Flesh Street Cleaner, influential to the extreme side of industrial metal by taking the aesthetics of grindcore, but making it slower. All hail Justin Broderick and Horror Master uh, is back, as discussed on la last, last week's Lock Horns. Uh, goldfish, I think you mean Godflesh, Street Cleaner <laughs> <laughs> has to be added. Hell, I wouldn't even consider it the legend since it came out in 89 before industrial metal was the thing. Thoughts on this record? Uh, I think, I mean, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. I think that, I think that, I mean, it came out before Psalm 69, so I don't think I, you can say Psalm 69, it owes anything to it, but I think like Swans, it sounded like nothing else when it came out. They, yeah. they figured out a new way to be heavy. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, and everyone's been chasing it since. Yeah. I don't think there's even a record that's come out since that sounds like Street Cleaner. For sure, and one of the few records I have on this week's uh, discussion, because I was an earache fanatic, all those early death metal records was like the altar for me, and so this was a record I actually have, and it was a real outlier, uh, but definitely a record that, again, comes up a lot, and one I should revisit with, with New Year's, because it's clearly one of these records that again, kind of seems to transcend just industrial metal. It appeals to metal fans of almost all stripes. But Lisa, are we moving forward? Yeah, I think this is a no-brainer. It's yeah. not going anywhere. Right. Um, and we need to talk about some there's other no bands. Dispute. There's no like Cannibal Corpse, like which album is it? No. There's I only Cannibal Corpse. There's I mean, only just, one. It has to be brought up. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, Fear Factory. It's yeah? Fear Factory. Okay, Fear Factory. Here we go, Artur F. Castanha, for, the, for an essential album to me, nothing more than Fear Factory uh, de Manufacture, best described as industrial a revolution on overdrive or the soundtrack for an extreme Terminator movie. Matthew Levin's de Manufacture, the perfect amalgamation of groove, thrash, and industrial, sounding like one of the Dinobots on a rampage. Jesse Ort. Either Demanufacture or Soul of a New Machine by Fear Factory. Those albums helped bring good cop, bad cop vocals to the forefront in metal. That's an interesting point. That's an early example of that. And further evolved industrial metal beyond what, what Ministry had done. I'd also, we're jumping the gun here. Nope. Oh. We're gonna not do, go there. Boop. Um, uh, Fear, fact, Fear Factory. Thoughts on this? That's Remanufacture. Oh. Do we have it? Yes, we do. Very good. We we'll jumped well, the gun there. Remanufactures, actually, if I had to pick one between the two, I mean, it's technically yeah. a remix album, but uh, I prefer it. It's interesting because yeah. Fear, I mean, Fear Factory, uh, that record is produced by Reese Fulber from Frontline Assembly. Right. Um, and when we talk about some other records later, there's a lot of these bands that, that kind of have Frontline Assembly as a common origin point. Right. Even though they're not really a metal band. Right. They're more kind of straight up electro-industrial. But uh, they tapped Reese Fulber to produce this record and you can, you can really hear it. You can really right. hear what he brought. Again, an, an, a band I know uh, a little bit better. And I think Lisa and I were talking before we went live, you know, Fear Factory, and correct me if I'm wrong, seemed like a metal band, first and foremost. Absolutely. That incorporated industrial elements rather than, say, the other way around, which right. may be more common. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? I think so. Yeah. I, think, I think that's what, what makes it, uh, what made it unique at the time mm -hmm. is, is rather than coming at it from the industrial point of view, right. they brought an industrial producer to make a metal record, right. which is you know, hadn't really been done in that right. sense. Right, yeah. it explains why it has such a, a, a unique sound. Remanufacture, we probably jumped the gun here. We'll put it on the sidelines. We'll, we'll see what the, the board has to say. But 
Barney Panofsky uh, says, as a drummer, I've always loved D manufacture. God bless Herrera. Uh, the first four tracks are Reckless and the piano ending of Zero Signal uh, is just a touch of humanity inside a hell made of cold metal. Uh, Mr. Kasanha is back. If anyone has something against Fear Factory Dean Manufacture, I will create Skynet and T100 and enslave all. This is not a language I understand. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm moving on. Corrigal the Exterminator, however, I understand. Uh, if, uh, if EPs count, then I would say Fear is the mind killer is the essential. Uh, Fear Factory record takes the best songs from Soul of a New Machine and industrializes them. Oliver Grunseis says Soul of a New Machine was more death Demanufacture more new metal, remanufacture is a pretty good call. So you like this record too? I do like that yeah. record a lot, yeah. They Other than Oliver, no one wants a remix record on a metal chart. Fine. I Gosh. have no skin in this game. <laughs> but we might want to write down Fear is the Mind Killer. Fear as is the Mind Killer. Alternate. Okay, yeah. I need a pen for that. Um, Tell me about this. Do you know this record, Fear is a Mind Killer? Uh, I never got into it as much. Right. I felt like I felt like it was solid, but it, it didn't it didn't grab me the same way. Okay. Yeah. We'll get it up there and see where we're going to go next, Lisa. We are going to a clip. When um, I was preparing for this show, uh, I always like to bring in other voices if possible, mm -hmm. and the first person I thought of. Uh, is the guy in Toronto who was my introduction to industrial metal in a band called Malhavik, mm -hmm. um, which I probably saw before Ministry did Stigmata. So that would have been my first s sort of live experience of a band that was like a metal band, but I like them. What's right. going on? Uh, so James is still around making music, and I asked for his pick for uh, today's show. Okay, let's hear from James. Hello, this is Jimmy Lamorge from the band Mel Havoc. Uh, I've also done some remix works for some big metal bands like Motley Crue, Tool, Nine Inch Nails, and Monster Magnet. And I did those with my old producer friend who did a couple of Mel Havoc records, a guy by the name of Dave Ray Vogelvie, who's probably responsible, one of the most responsible. A guy's responsible for the uh, industrial metal scene in the world. He's worked with Ministry, Nine Inch Nails, uh, Marilyn Manson, Skinny Puppy, uh, just to name a few. Anyways, that's probably why we were asked to pick most essential industrial metal record. And uh, I try to think of bands that are new because I've always loved new bands. So I was thinking it's one of the new records by the French uh, black metal scene, uh, Flint Ass Nord or Despel Omega. But I ended up going with this probably the greatest uh, industrial metal record ever made. You know, it just came out last year by a band that's been around 40 years and they're probably one of the most uh, important bands in the uh, industrial metal scene, without a doubt. So that would be uh, Killing Jokes. Newest record, Pylon, that just came out, just came out about a year ago, and without a doubt, it may be the greatest record after four, almost four decades of making music. So, Killing Jokes, Pylon is Jimmy Lamarck's pick for essential industrial metal record. So, shout out to Killing Joke there, an opportunity, you know, another homage to Chris Cornell when I did get a chance to talk to him about music. This band uh, was a huge influence on them, uh, on him. Uh, give me your thoughts on this record. I, it's an interesting choice. I think, uh -huh. that, I, think that, I think that the earlier, kind of mid-90s stuff, I shouldn't say earlier, the mid-90s stuff fits more with industrial. Uh, but I think their 2003 self-titled and the record that came after it, Hassanas from the Basement of Hell, are kind of some of the most metal mm -hmm. things that they've produced. And uh, Pylon I liked, it's a good record. But uh, to me, it, 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 it didn't have the same energy right. that uh, the early odds did. Okay, well, let's see what people have to say. Killing Joke, here we go. Jenny Laszlo, I don't know if they'll go back as far as Killing Joke. Hey, we go back. <laughs> but I think even though they started incorporating industrial elements into their music, they can't be classified as a true industrial metal act, okay? I gotta say, I don't know this band that well, but I've not always heard this, this term referencing their music. But what do I know? Mikhail Lopez. Lopez, Killing Joke, Pandemonium. They took their post-punk sound and blended it with the heaviness of Godflesh and Ministry, released in 1994. It was a stepping stone for the genre masterpiece. Uh, Bad Hair Day says, I always think that Killing Joke had a huge influence on, on industrial metal, even though they aren't even industrial metal themselves. It seems like Ministry took notes from them and Rammstein too. It's almost like we've got like the four, a bit of a forefather thing going on here. Yeah, I mean, I think Killing Joke, uh, I think Jarvis would agree.
super influential to a lot of the bands on this chart. Right. We can't put a brand new album on an essential albums list. That's not the way Lockhorns works. Although I certainly appreciate wanting to shout out new music. Um, we could consider Pandemonium, I'm not sure, or, or early Killing Joke albums. Um, I think we should give them a nod sure. and then uh, move on okay. to the other bands people want to talk about. I'm happy to move on. I mean, do you, do you think another record of theirs deserves to be on the I top think, 10 essentials? I think Pandemonium is more essential. Yeah? Okay. Right. I, think okay. That, I think that in addition to the influence it had in industrial, it also had a huge influence in, in grunge, in alternative, and you know, Nirvana cited Killing Joke. Everyone cited Killing Joke as, as a huge influence. Right. Well, let's get it down. I've misspelled it. We know what you mean. But we know what I mean. Yeah. We speak the same language. Okay, so Lisa, we're going to get Pandemonium down here on the side with Pylon for Killing Joke. Where are we going next? We're going to go to a band uh, that you like. What? Imagine. There's a first for everything. Because here we go. Because it's Lock uh, Horns, and it's just not Lock Horns if we don't talk about Devin Townsend, is it? It's true. It's true. Or Morbid Angel Alters of Madness. <laughs> uh, strapping Young Lad City. My boys. From Vancouver, British Columbia, let's go to the board. Ryan Beard, Strapping Young Lad City. Even if Devin probably deserves his own chart, it's a furiously aggressive, dirty, and mechanistic sounding piece of work. Though it certainly wasn't the first SYL album, this was the one that helped put them on the map. No dispute there. Matthew Levin's uh, City pulverizes everything else with sheer brutality in a, uh, an intense raging pummel fest leaves you feeling exhausted the sound of robocop so many movie references gone rogue in west edmonton mall gunning down shoppers that's frightening i'm moving on Mikhail lopez like uh, Fear Factory, Strapping Young Lad were responsible for pushing industrial metal into a more extreme, fast, heavy, and even more accessible approach. Kenny Witt, uh, my pick would be City. Uh, most industrial isn't metal to me, but City is the gold standard of industrial that is also metal and fucking Devon, obviously. Alex uh, Rouleau, uh, City, was not just early in the genre, but contributed uh, a high level of uh, uh, technicality. Banger. Cannot deny Heavy Debbie, that's for sure. What do you think? I have a, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, yeah. I think that, I think that, I think that, again, we're talking about the Frontline Assembly mm -hmm. heritage here. Right. Uh, Adrian and Devin uh, were both on Frontline Assembly as Millennium. Right. Doing drums and and guitars, right. and I had this conversation about industrial metal the other day, and Adrian White actually said when they recorded heavy, they were going for industrial hate metal. That was deliberately what they were going for. Right. So right. I think they definitely uh, they need to be in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's almost like Frontline Assembly needs to be up here somewhere too, yeah. potentially lingering yeah. with Killing Joke and sort of being the the progenitors mm -hmm. of of this uh, style of metal. I mean, yeah, for me. It was, it, it had that thrashy element, obviously amazing music, musicianship, maybe a little bit biased. They were almost a local band. Little known fact, Jed Simon was in a great Victoria thrash metal band called Armorous when I was about this high and uh, hand drawing uh, death logos on my uh, jacket. But uh, yeah, that was, this was, a, this was a, an industrial sound that certainly appealed to me. And again, uh, Devin has that capacity to create such an epic sound uh, without sort of sacrificing that very direct kind of uh, aggression that we love about metal. Lisa. No one is locking horns about anything today other than the stuff we haven't gotten to, which we will be getting to. So, um, it's loving horns there's today. A, it's what? Loving, loving horns. horns. Very friendly. That is not industrial sounding I'm or sorry. metal no, sounding. I'm really can't sorry. have no. that. Um, Scratch from the record. Yeah. Strapping Young Lad is, a no, is another no-brainer like Godflesh. Our mm -hmm. audience loves this record, yeah. so uh, that's going to stay for sure. Um, I'm getting a lot of people yelling at me, especially Germans, and no one likes that. <laughs> So it's time to talk about Rammstein. Okay, Rammstein, 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 Rammstein. I have a lisp. <laughs> oh, but only when you're speaking German. Okay. Hannah Klein says Rammstein's. Here we go. Sen sucht. No, has to be on the list for sure. It helped popularize the German style of industrial metal throughout the globe with its 
stomping rhythms, highly distorted walls of guitars, and Till Lindemann's trademark German singing contains their most well-known song, Du Hast. Even I know that. The prime example of German industrial metal that people from Chile to Japan love to sing along despite the language barrier while the stage is on fire. Yeah, what a fucking show. Jonathan Selman, you've gotta have some Rammstein in there. They are the epitome of industrial metal. And Daniel Awarnes, uh, Sensucht, no idea what, how I'm pronouncing that, is one of the biggest and best industrial metal albums. The Kraftwerk influence really brings the mechanized sound into the music. So ultimately German. Jairus, give me your thoughts on this one. I guess this is where we fight, because I, I've never considered Rammstein to be an industrial band. What? Yeah, I, that Alert whole, I the mean. press. I, I, I think from that whole NDH thing, I think oomph is closer to industrial than Rammstein is. Right. Rammstein lacks, to my ears, the kind of experimental nerve mm. necessary for it to be industrial. Okay. It's solid, it's mechanical, it's, it's super well produced, um, but it's, I mean, they have flamethrowers and that's really cool to look at, <laughs> but it's not experimental. It's, so if it's not industrial, what is it, in your opinion? I mean, I think, I think it is part of the, the, the German NDH genre right. i don't know i'm not going to try to pronounce it but i think yeah. that it it sounds to me a lot more metal than it does industrial i never really i never really felt it right and it sounds to me uh this notion of experimental right. is a thread through industrial for you so i think it's so it's got to have that element at least it but, seems yeah it has to it has to be reaching for something yeah. that if if it if it failed it would be a disaster but they pull it out somehow right. it's an interesting balance you're saying experimental and yet there's a highly predictable element to this music too because you're locked into a drum beat absolutely the repetition is important so mm -hmm. It's all about delicate balance on Lockhorns, and I still try to understand it all. Uh, we got some more con uh, comments. Manan Dedia, uh, thank you. Pronounced Zehen Zucht, thank you, means searching or in search of something. Uh, Manan Dedia is back, <laughs> uh, Rammstein. They are like the sepultura of industrial outsiders, great songs instantly relatable and our brazilian daniel williams laughed at that pronunciation igor no coincidence asam bosam the band is great but it's not industrial metal reese spect ramstein not industrial dischu to me ramstein has an industrial aesthetic but not a very industrial sound their sound is more influenced by edm than industrial when hearing their synths and beats. So this brings up an interesting debate because it's sort of like people are saying they don't belong, not because of the metal component, right. but because of the industrial component, right. which is totally unique, it right. seems. I think with all of these records on the board, aside from the Rammstein record, they're all bringing something new and something experimental to the forefront. Rammstein mm -hmm. combines some interesting things, combines you know, epic orchestral and, sure. and you know, uh, slick production, but yeah. they're not reaching for something new and noisy and weird in the same kind of way, I think. Right, okay. Well. I'm going to pull what's now called a cannibal corpse and pull this off because it seems to me that there is some consensus, maybe minor, you know, we need to hear what you really think. We're pulling Rammstein off the uh, essential albums list. Let's check in. we got Godflesh. we got Ministry of the Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste. we got Young Gods. we got Fear Factory, Demanufacture. we got Psalm 69. Still have two ministry albums on the top 10 and Strapping Young Lad City. So we've got six of 10, not a lot of time. Yeah, we're 40 minutes in yeah. and we don't have that many records. Um, if you thought people were unclear about uh, Ramstein, uh, it's time to talk about Nine Inch Nails. Okay, here we go. Selena Dahmer. On the last industrial metal debate, it was said that Nine Inch Nails wasn't industrial metal. Blame Lisa Latisor. But industrial rock. In my opinion, Nine Inch Nails will always be industrial metal, especially after the broken EP and the, down and, and the downward spiral. Nine Inch Nails in the 90s could compete with anyone. Jamie Laszlo, Nine Inch Nails never had enough metal to be a metal act as a whole. But uh, I think TDS has enough metal within the album to be included. Mikaela Lopez, uh, Pretty Hate Machine is essential industrial metal. Uh, Matthew Levin says, whether Nine Inch Nails are metal or not, 
The Downward Spiral album is synonymous with the scene, and it is too good not to include. I'd put it here for its accessibility, commercial performance, its ability to draw a more casual music, uh, more casual music fans into the genre. At the time, this record was inescapable. Uh, March of the Pigs seemed to be on constant rotation on MTV. Remember MTV? Jamie Laszlo, as a whole, you can call Nine Inch Nails industrial rock. But the one album, Downward Spiral, fits, I think. Michael Joseph, a lot of opinions here. If you put Nine Inch Nails on the chart over Rammstein, something has gone seriously wrong. Not the first time that's happened on this show. And Guts Dozer says Broken is definitely industrial metal. The rest is not so much. So we do have a magnet for Broken. Let's put that up there. Uh, Jairus, you got to weigh in here. It's beautiful. Um, I think that I think that Gus Dozer is right. I think that this is an industrial metal record. I mm-hmm. think the guitar tone on, on it is perfect. I think it's front to back, brilliant. But it's one EP mm-hmm. from a band that has you know like like two dozen releases. Right. I think that that the the genius of Nine Inch Nails, what they do better than anything else, is they can hop into a genre, make an EP of it that's as good as anything else right. out there in the world, right. including soundtracks, right? Oh, I'm going to win an Oscar for a soundtrack. I'm yeah. going to win a Grammy for a metal record. I'm going to put out a jungle record. Right. Uh, but then they move on to something else. Right. I don't think that they are an industrial metal band. They have some industrial metal songs, but I don't think as, a, as an act we can really classify them. But the way. album belongs, in your opinion. Definitely. It's an industrial metal album. It is an industrial. It they is. did not win the Grammy for best metal album over Psalm 69 that over year. Psalm 69, NWO. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. the Grammys know everything. <laughs> yeah. They know Especially nothing. Especially when Jeff Rotel beat They Metallica, know nothing about I metal, digress. so I don't know what that says about our chart. <laughs> How Jeff Rotel came up in an industrial metal episode, I'm not very sure, but it did. Okay, well, we got seven. Nine Inch Nails stays. Where are we going next? We're going to another clip. Okay. Um, we asked uh, a metal journalist. Not a lot of metal journalists cover industrial. Sure. From my experience. Yep. Um, but we found one. And uh, Good job. <laughs> you, we found one. Uh, and this is Alex Pick for okay. Essential Album. Let's hear it. My name's Alex Chillingworth, and my pick for an essential industrial metal album is Rabies by Skinny Puppy. It's not your traditional industrial metal album for the most part. It's just kind of Skinny Puppy being Skinny Puppy. This kind of weird, synth-driven, unique sound that is only Skinny Puppy. And you've got songs like Warlock, which aren't metal at all, but were still absolutely terrifying. But Rabies is my pick because it balances this thematic heaviness and this keyboard ugh, that Skinny Puppy do so well with two stone-cold industrial metal songs, Tin Omen and Fascist Jock Itch. That double bass in Fascist Jock Itch is so heavy, it's like brushing your teeth with a fucking meat cleaver. Al Jurgensen from Ministry is also on these songs, and you can tell. It's Skinny Puppy meets late 80s Ministry, which is a beautiful thing. And this isn't the best Skinny Puppy album, because the best Skinny Puppy album is Too Dark Park, but this is such an important record, and bands like Three Teeth and Youth Code really do owe Skinny Puppy and Rabies a pint or two. Now, Skinny Puppy, not in my collection, but Lisa? We didn't have a magnet, but I do have the record. Look at you. (laughs) Final Geek in the house. Yeah, I got a few. There we go. Uh, you want to give us your thoughts on Skinny Puppy? Uh, I mean, I think I think for industrial music, for kind of the, the second wave of industrial, electro-industrial, and especially coming out of Vancouver, mm-hmm. where, you know, Frontline and Strapping and everyone came out of, uh, it's, it's a super important seminal record. It's as close as Skinny Puppy got to metal. Yeah. Uh, and it's produced by Al Jurgensen from Ministry. Right. So it for sure, li- it, it, it floated in that universe, mm-hmm. but it's, it's hard to call it a metal record. It's just as close as Skinny Puppy ever got. Does it belong in the 10 essential, in your opinion? Yeah. It's, it's an essential industrial record. Oh. I don't know that it's an essential okay. industrial All right. record. And Let's... once again on Love Horns, everyone agrees. <laughs> I thought we agreed we'd never actually say that. I thought that's actually what we agreed. I'm anyway, sorry to bring this to you. I'm going to bring this over to the side just to make room for still three more records, but we're gonna go to the board. Skinny Puppy, Daniel Crow. Puppy isn't an industrial metal band, but is the most important industrial band. Rabies was a flirtation with metal producing killer tunes that were very influential. Matthew Liven says, I would rather see Rob Zombie than Skinny Puppy on the list or any of these other industrial metal, uh, industrial bands that are electronic, not metal. Not that I dislike, they just ain't metal. 
Tony O'Brien, I love Skinny Puppy. I think they're incredibly important for industrial and they're pioneering and leaders, but not metal at all. Not even industrial metal. Sorry, as much as I'd love for them to be here. More love on love horns. Uh, Miss Anola <laughs> says, Rabies, while a great album is not industrial metal. Wow, some yeah, consensus. Very good. Uh, that was easy, clearly influential, and wow, yeah, huge Vancouver presence on this show, which I never really connected those dots, not sure why that happened. But anyway, Lisa, right. no skinny puppy. We still got three slots left, not a lot of time. What's next? Uh, one of those slots might be Marilyn Manson. It might be. Might be Marilyn Manson. Here we go, Horror Master. If somehow Manson makes the list, which I doubt it, then Antichrist Superstar belongs here. The guitar riff and the beautiful pleep People was an anthem of the late 90s. No dispute there. Andreo, Andre Oliveira, 257. My vote goes to Antichrist Superstar. Uh, songs like The Beautiful People, Deformography, and Little Horn have an explicit industrial feeling and sound. Nine Inch Nails was a big influence. And Fairy Kim says Antichrist Superstar, question mark. I think this one counts as industrial metal, and I think it's his best album. And the impact he had on the metal scene of the time cannot be denied. What do you think? Does this belong? I think it does. Yep. I think it does. Yeah, I think it is. It is. Uh, it's his best record by far. Yeah. Uh, produced by Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails, uh, and I think it's honestly one of the best concept albums of the '90s. I think yep. it's solid front to back. Uh, and if it's not industrial metal, then what is it? Yeah. Right. Like right. I, I, yeah. It, it doesn't sound like the other records on the board, but it, it doesn't really sound like like anything. It's this weird apocalyptic pop yeah. production on it that that made it what it is. And to, to the points on the board, I mean, really brought a sound to the mainstream like, like, like no other band had. I mean, at the context of that time, no one sounded quite like Marilyn. And, and of course, the, the visual imprint that I think he uh, had at that time was just so brilliant with the, with, with the music videos. Uh, here we go, Michael Joseph. Oh, Lord, no. Please, not Manson. He's much more commercial metal to me. New subgenre? <laughs> Shit. Uh, <laughs> rock Critic 247 uh, says Manson needs a spot. Keeping him off because he's popular is like leaving Metallica off thrash. Be reasonable, folks. We try to be reasonable here. We're Canadian. <laughs> We're actually quite good at it, to a fault, perhaps. Okay, we've got eight. We're making progress. Marilyn Manson has been added uh, to the top 10 essential industrial metal albums. Are people scrapping for the last two spots? Double oh, L? A little bit. Uh -huh. we, are, we are down to a couple of things. I'm going to throw some names out there. And if you have a strong argument for or against these albums, not these bands, speak up now. Um, Rob Zombie, Hellbilly Deluxe, uh, Pitch Shifter Industrial, um, KMFDM, uh, Nihil. These are contenders, but we need to hear from you. Okay, uh, we're gonna go to the board. Do we wanna start with one of these bands? Rob Zombie, yeah? Sure. Horror Master, Last Exorcisto, uh, Devil Music Volume 1 has to be under consideration. Without this album, I probably would have never discovered bands like Rammstein, Godflesh, and Marilyn Manson, Jamie Laszlo. Just can't get enough of Jamie Laszlo. Hellbelly is when, for me, the industrial sound really started to take shape with Rob Zombie. We don't have any magnets. What are your thoughts on Rob or White Zombie? Do you have a record that you think belongs here? I mean, I, when when White Zombie and Rob Zombie was happening, yeah. admittedly, I slept on it. I'm like, this yeah. is not, this is not weird enough for me. But right, uh, but right. coming back to it years later. Right. It's, I mean, it's great. The records yeah. are so well produced. They're yeah. fantastic. And yeah. just because he's singing about the car from the monsters instead of, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. they're really killer records. So right. I think, I think Devil Music would be my pick for, for Devil Zombie Music. Record. Okay, yeah. we'll park Devil Music as a contender for one of the last two spots. We're going to move on. Mikhail Lopez says KMFDM Nile has enough elements to be considered metal and of course essential probably the best mix of metal and electronic music i think it respects the best elements of both genres very well diego diablo uh, says also that nile is the key industrial metal album after psalm 69. this isn't a valid list without it they define industrial dance plus crazy huge guitars i love guitars that are crazy huge it's pure manic 
energy, Tony O'Brien, Nile, so important in linking relatively popular industrial popular industrial metal rock with the arty underground experimental industrial scenes and I believe uh, Sasha worked with Pigface at some uh, point. So weigh in on this one. Uh I think it's it's my favorite Came FDM record. Okay, we do have one for Angst, but maybe that's not the one that's getting uh, favoritism on the right. I mean, I think Angst is yeah. more metal. I think Angst is, right. is straight up kind of a, a thrashier record. Right. But Nile is a better record. It's 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 the development on it's better. Again, it's got kind of more of an industrial sound, more use of samples, better drum machines. Um, but yeah, I think I think we have to talk about Came FDM. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think they belong without a doubt. Even I know that. <laughs> and what do I know? Lisa, okay, so is that it? Is it uh, that simple? Well, there's a Nile little bit... Nile and, and Rob Zombie? A little bit of music? debate still going. Pitch Shifter, not influential enough right. to make the list. Right. Um, we do have a magnet. We do have, we made a magnet, we but... Magnets. Um, Put it over here, run out of room. Anything uh, else? I'm, I've asked people which KMFDM album, and it's coming up 50-50. You're not helping. We got Nail Bomb, point blank, as we, well. We thought maybe Nail Bomb, but no one's been talking about that. Okay, okay. Um, they do want uh, Ramstein to come back. They. The chat. The collective yes. they. <laughs> the hordes of they. The Germans. <laughs> the Germans the de <laughs> They're coming. Uh, okay. Ramstein is back. You're going to be able to sleep at night? Uh, I mean, not soundly, but... <laughs> Certainly not if you're listening to Ramstein. No. Uh, fine. Ramstein is back. That means we've got one spot left. Well, it might, it might be a Rob Zombie record if you guys can decide which one. Okay. Uh, Diatom the Supercell Astro Creep 200 has got to be the best and most industrial of all the zombie albums. So driving. Samples and synths are peppered all over the album. We don't want a Cannibal Corpse Syndrome here. we got to agree on something. You're saying it's... Les Escrocisto, Devil Music, yeah. yeah. Okay, and Astro Creep, there's been a few other contenders. Let's go to the quick chat here. Sepultura Chaos AD, not. Uh, Prong, probably not. Probably not. Really? Les Exorcisto? We're doing it? I don't Case know. Closed? I don't know, you guys. Frontline Assembly, Wisconsin <laughs> Death Trip, nah, Nail Bomb, maybe. Come on guys, Hellbilly Deluxe. <laughs> This is the speed round. Get your gloves on. No Ramstein. White Zombie. Astro Creep. A lot okay. of nail bomb on there, but I think that I think that listening to it out of the context of it being like this new industrial side project, it's just thrash. Right. Yeah. yeah there's nothing particularly industrial uh, about it. And why do I know that? Because I like it. Right. So <laughs> nail bomb keeps being mentioned, yeah. but as I will keep mentioning on every show, just saying the name of a group doesn't get them on the chart. You have to tell us why they are important, influential, why the record was special. Just telling me the name. I got nothing to work with. We got a lot of nail bomb fans. So, nail bomb fans. Not sure if they're industrial metal, I think yeah. is the point we're, we're making. I also record. have to say I was, I was tasked by the industrial community to ask you to please take back Morbid Angel, <laughs> that one industrial record we don't want it. No one has ever uttered that. I've been tasked by the industrial metal community. I know. It's, it's, Own that. It's, That's a, good. It's, it's like a burden. Uh, <laughs> Static X, Last Exorcisto. I'm seeing more Rom Zombie here than anything else. Astro Creep. Astro Creep. Which one is it? Here we go to the board. We do have a comment here for Nail Bomb, Ross Johnson, Nail Bomb, Point Blank. Some industrial bands, guitar riffs can be a bit weak. Not the case with this album. Great guitar riffs on this from two musicians from bands full of great guitar work. Guitar, guitar, guitar. I think that's the point we're making. Yeah. Uh, but the industrial element is just not there enough. Astro Creep might be winning out, Lisa. Thoughts? I feel that, but again, you're just writing the name of the record. I got nothing to go on okay. here. Okay, uh, we do have more Nail Bomb. Point Blank is great. Unrelenting industrial thrash, really, like a cross between Sore Throat and Godflesh. Unforgiving, powerful, the best of Sepultura and uh, Fudge Tunnel. Fair enough. And another uh, for Point Blank. Uh, Smarty Pants here doesn't agree, so sorry, uh, ruled off the island. What do we got? Astro Creep, again, just, you know, using all caps doesn't... No, but we're getting like a lot more like reasons for Nail Bomb than okay, anything. We've got okay. a couple more here yeah. coming into the wire. It's an articulate bunch. Point Blank uh, says Machine Gun Etiquette 9. says Point Blank, it brought in the Thrash fans and made it okay to like stuff with keyboards slash noise. Aussie Rules 777, Nail Bomb deserves to be up there. Because at the time, 
That was the heaviest and fastest industrial metal album uh, due in part to Max and Alex Newport. It also gave industrial metal a groove. A uh, metal shirt collector says Nail Bomb Point Blank is so industrial, I actually thought Al Jorgensen was on the record. Are we getting voted off here? I think, with, we, I think we might be. Okay, yeah. are we doing this? Let's just yeah. watch things blow up. That's how it works here on Lockhorn. Yeah. That's how it works. State your case. Get your knuckles off the ground. How many State do you your have? case. Uh, white zombie. Do we have ten? We have. We have ten. ten. I think. Do we have ten? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. ten. We have ten. We have ten. We're doing that. Okay. Godflesh Street Cleaner. Ministry of the Mind is a terrible thing to taste. The young gods, nine inch nails, broken. Fear Factory demanufacture. Uh, ministry. Psalm nine. First time we've had. Two records from one band on essential albums, maybe. Strapping Young Lads, City, uh, Marilyn Manston, uh, Antichrist Superstar, uh, Ramstein, the album I can't pronounce, and Nail Bomb, uh, Point Blank. That's a good day. Not bad? Yeah. Well done. Thank you very much. Couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Come back sometime. Uh, thank you to Jairus, thank you to Lisa, Daniel, Craig, and Andrew for making this happen. Please subscribe to Banger TV. That's the I am dinging your sign off because <laughs> we just had a, one last uh, moment with Jarrett to tell us about where this is going. Okay. The oh. future. We didn't talk about the future because you're like, it has no future. You've never hit that cowbell that hard. <laughs> never. That, was that was serious. Like, that was serious. I stopped. Where's it going? Where's it going? I yeah. think I think that I think that uh, <laughs> producers who are experienced with. Uh, Bass music and EDM mm -hmm. are getting back into the game. I think acts like Cyanotic and Rabbit Junk um, are really fusing industrial metal uh, ideas mm -hmm. with more modern, more aggressive production techniques. Right. And I think we're going to see over the next couple of years things with a structure of old industrial metal, but built with a new kind of production that's going to really kick you in the face. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, I think in large part, maybe since most of these records, I mean, this is largely a 90s mm -hmm. list, pretty skewed towards the early 90s, I would say. You know, by that point, probably new metal kind of exhausted uh, ears in terms of incorporating that kind of clickety clack, if you will, uh, sound. And, and, you know, recently, I think we're generally seeing um, people gravitating towards more uh, straight up metal sounds, but it'll be interesting to see where it goes. It's true, it does feel like it's very much of a particular time Definitely. when this marriage happened, but it's cool to hear that, uh, that it hasn't stopped and we'll have to see where it goes. Sorry, Sam. Okay. You're not gonna hit. You're not gonna do it again, are you? I'm done. I'm okay. Done. <laughs> I'm Thank out. you for joining us on Lock Horns. Next week is our final episode for now. We're gonna take a little summer break, and uh, next week we're going to do the best albums of 2017, part one from the first half of the year. And back to join me in the studio will be Cal, uh, Callum Slingerland from Exclaim. That will be coming at you Wednesday, back to Wednesday, May 24th at 4 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for joining us on Lockhorns. See you next time.